Columbia, Houston. You are go for deploy for performance gate 101. Roger that, Houston. Good luck, gentlemen. Mia grazie. Uh, thank you. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed this time. Houston, the orbiter is stabilized, and I am on my mark. Confirm, we show TSS thrusters on. Roger that. There she goes. Houston, we are putting the satellite in yaw hold. There's a slight drift towards the orbiter starboard. Bull's controlling it. Copy, you've got good tension. It's gonna be a home movie from hell. Five hours of string unwinding. The towns have been waiting so long to see this little beauty of theirs go up, they're gonna love every frame of it. Right, Mario? Hey, 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 we are generating voltage. Five volts. 20 volts. <laughs> 50 volts. Houston. We show voltage on the tether. Copy that. And congratulations to the team. <laughs> and my boss is going to be out, yeah? Sam, Mr. Pedrini, are you sure I can't get you some more coffee? Uh, grazie, no. No, oh, thanks. How much longer till it's reached its full length? It reeled out 19 kilometers, so about another hour. As you say, um, textbook all the way. Houston, Columbia. We see the tension way down, but the tether is still going out fine. Very slight oscillation. Copy, Boom. Thank you. All right, everyone, stay calm. Dwight, move to the pilot seat. Roger, Boom. Stay, stay calm. calm. It's a situation. What the hell's going on? Houston, 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 Houston. Houston. Camera, real motion. CRT data, Dwight, fuel cells. Fuel cells, check. Camera, how's that real motion? Camera, how's the real uh, motion? Uh, Roger, uh, real still unwinding. Dwight, main bus voltage. Main bus volts, normal. Columbia, Houston, what just happened up there? You tell us. Looks like over amperage on the DC buses. Check the voltage level on the satellite. Roger. Satellite voltage, 3,000 volts. Wait, I'm sure I'm tether real voltage at zero. Houston, everything is fine on Mario's end, but Tamara's showing a... Oh, look, the tether. Oh, my God. Houston. The tether is broken. And repeat, the tether has broken at the boom and is floating away from us. Copy. Confirm. The tether is now outside the boom and well away from the orbiter. We still have one to two kilometers of tether left inside the boom, and that appears to be where the tether has broken. We want to confirm you have a visual on the satellite and it's moving away from the orbiter. Roger. Confirm, Houston. That should be on your EOS downlink now. 
Those are some tether dynamics we do not want to see. Copy that. All right, come on, people. We still have a full day of tasks to perform. Tamara wants you to reel in what's left of the tether and go ahead and stow the boom. Will do. Dwight, I want you to run a complete systems check. Let me know if we lost anything up here. Roger, Bull. I'm going to go ahead and secure this video camera. I'm sure they're going to want to take a look at it when we get back. Yeah, probably a few thousand times. Paul? Yeah? When everything was dark, did you see anything unusual? No light in here is plenty unusual. Not in here, outside the orbiter. Anything, even for a second? It was pitch black, Tamara. You're saying you saw something out there? I don't know. Come on, people. Let's focus. It was nothing. Forget I mentioned it. You look for wood storks. <laughs> Nature's booby traps I'm worried about. <laughs> you just gotta let your instincts take over. Oh. Oh. Zeke? I always felt the instinct was overrated. You okay, Zink? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, man. What a sick idea of a joke. Uh. Come on, Jimmy, give me a hand. Maybe it's an alligator. Oh. With a competitive streak. What thoughtless idiot doesn't flag a dangerous rope? At least put a damn scarf around it. It's pitch black down there. This line is how I find my way back. I thought it was breaking. You're diving solo? Perfect. I have enough air left to finish my work. That's well, just as well. You shouldn't be diving by yourself. Well, it's none of your business, but I do it all the time. No, that's quite all right. You've done enough. Hey, come on. He's trying to help. DB, you're right. We should get back with our run. Zeke, we'll see you back at the center, OK? OK. DB, come on. You're a little out of your element, aren't you? <laughs> Not exactly. I was raised here. This is like my backyard. It's all right. It's the least I can do. Look, I truly am sorry I messed up your dive. Let me make it up to you. Lunch, dinner. That's OK. Forget it. Maneuver to burn, attitude complete. Over. Copy. Out. Been real quiet up there today. Yeah, not one bad pun from Bull since yesterday. You're not gonna like this. The unkindest cut, big slice. NASA loses $400 million spaghetti with meatball. We've got to give them something to counter those headlines. I don't want anybody to talk to the crew until they've had a chance to be debriefed. And we get a chance to take a look at what's left of that tether. OK. Oh, <laughs> this is my particular favorite. It was my mission. It's our mission. Yeah, well, I want to know what the hell happened. And we all do. Yes. And we'll find out. But until then, I need the entire flight deck crew contained here at the center. They can bunk at the beach house. When you view the mission tapes, I want to be there. Why don't you get the one that Tamara shot, too? Probably won't see anything we didn't get in the downlink. The first thing's first. As soon as you get cleaned up, get a bite to eat, and 
and I want to get everybody to brief as soon as possible. Okay, Mario. So then what happened? My laptop was in front of me. Huh? I just noted the tether tension, and you know, it was all over before it began. You know, lights off, lights on, just like that. I haven't. I have no, no idea. idea what happened. There's got to be a logical explanation, just like there has to be a logical explanation for whatever that light was I saw. I guess it was a light. You mean the flash? Um, no, I'm not talking about the flash. And we all saw that. I'm talking about after the flash, when everything was dark. Describe it. Well, at the risk of sounding like a real space cadet, I'd have to say it sort of looked like a, um, an aurora borealis. Yeah, that's it. A small, compact, car-sized aurora borealis, right outside the orbiter. <sighs> Must have been my eyes playing tricks on me. Yet it seems so real, this dancing gossamer curtain in colors I'd never imagined existed. Someone will figure out that when we got into darkness, I must have hit the THC, put some more tension in the tether. I'm gonna book a sim, find out exactly where I screwed it up. You'd think after all these years, I'd take what happened up there in stride. Write it off as a system failure. <laughs> but I can't. I, I, I'm the last guy you'd expect to hear say what I'm about to tell you. But what happened to that tether was out of man's hands. There was something out there. I saw it. A light. A light? No, it wasn't any kind of light. This thing had substance and form, and it was moving fast. It was moving. Excuse me. Toby's got all the mission tapes up and ready to go. Maybe one of the cameras caught it. Let's hope so. As you know, each camera operates off one of the orbiter's independent electrical systems, so one of them's got to show us something. The tape camera shot. Uh, that'll be on the far left monitor. I've already fast-forwarded to 5 hours, 13.30. Blackout occurred at 5.14 into deployment. Should be coming up any time now. Wait. Tamra's camera wasn't hooked into electrical. It's battery-operated. It shouldn't have gone off. This would not have happened. We did rigorous, extensive pre-flight testing. You know that. The way I see it, only thing could have happened was that the tension in the tether between orbiter and the satellite was allowed to get too taut. Houston monitored orbital acceleration. Bull was on the mark all the way. Well, then if no one is to blame, I should still have my satellite. Mr. Petrini, our purpose here is not to assign culpability, but to exchange information that would help us Mr. determine... Mr. Pedrini, you can blame me all you want to. You and the Italian Space Agency have every right to. Not that that's going to bring your satellite back, but I take full responsibility. Now, if you'll excuse me. Okay. Everybody happy? We have somebody we can blame now. So let's move on and find out what happened. Hello, my name is Zeke Bowman. I'm calling from Kennedy Space Center. Uh, I ran across one of your uh, people yesterday at the Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge, and I'm calling back with some information that she requested. No, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know her name. She is uh, 
five five. She's got blonde hair. She's kind of cute. Jennifer, yeah, that sounds like it could be her. Uh, may I leave her a message, please? Hey. Meeting over? Yeah, finally. You sure took the wind out of Pedrini's sails. Wasn't my intention. You really think it was your fault? Yeah. We had a situation up there and I let it throw me. I see. Well, I guess you haven't heard the news. Bull Eckert is human. Try and get used to the idea. out there somewhere beyond the moon. Doesn't matter how many missions you chalk up, there's always a lag time, huh? How'd you find me? The old Apollo launch pad. Rumor has it this is where you like to go when you've got things on your mind. It's hallowed ground. Being here kind of puts things in perspective for me. Whenever people speak of brave men, great deeds, let their names be always remembered. Paul, can I ask you a question? Shoot. Do you believe in God? Well, how do we go into space and not realize something bigger is at work? What about you? No. I always assumed you were a Sunday go-to-meeting kind of person. I probably would have been if I hadn't seen God. You saw God? When I was four. I was playing on the steps by our back door when something made me look up. But nobody was there. And then something made me look way up and I saw this wonderful face looking down at me. And I knew it was God. I ran in and I told my parents, you know what they said? They said it was only clouds. So they took me back outside and showed me how you can see clouds shaped like most anything. I tell you, I felt so let down that right then and there I gave up any idea of God. That's an awfully big decision for a little kid. I know Krauss told you what I saw up there. Yeah. He asked me if I saw it, too. I didn't. Which doesn't mean to say that what you saw wasn't real. It could have been any number of things. Like what? Solar flare, dust tail of a comet. You know, during Apollo 11, Neil and Buzz saw something they called flicker flashes, unexplainable streaks of light inside the command module when it was dark. Now, Mike Collins was in the module with him. He never saw anything. You're not buying any of those, are you? I didn't just see that light. I felt it as well. And what I didn't tell Krauss was that when everything went dark, I got scared. Scared like I've never been before. Then out of the port window came this amazing, sweet light. And I wasn't scared anymore. Then why do you want to explain it away? Because, Bull, if it wasn't just more clouds, and if my parents were wrong, then maybe I've wasted the last 30 years. It's lovely, but not necessary. You didn't return my phone calls. I figured you were still mad at me. Not mad, just busy.
Going fishing. Is that what keeps you so busy? Not fishing. Apartment hunting. Look, I know we got off to a bad start, and I'm making an effort to set it right, but this sarcasm is not helping any. Bad start? That implies there's something to start. Couldn't there be? Why? Because I can't stop thinking about you. I wasn't putting you on about apartment hunting. Part of my job is to help relocate these guys. <laughs> What's this guy need? A one bedroom with a kitchenette? <laughs> no, he just needs a nice clean pond with access to an underwater cave. That's what I was looking for when we met. <laughs> no, I swear that was the one that they got in the VAB at the Space Center. Yeah, all these come from where they're not wanted, like your Space Center. Look, when I saw your NASA tag, I didn't realize that you were an astronaut. So how'd you find out? I did call you back. You were out doing some astronaut training. Why didn't you leave me a message? I just found out you were an astronaut. I didn't figure we'd have a lot in common, you know? What's the point? Why don't you let me take you out and I'll prove you wrong? Come on, anything. Okay, anything? Where have you been? I've been paging you for the last hour. I swear, my beeper never went off. That lunch was awful quiet. Mm-hmm. Okay, long story short, Dwight's been talking to a reporter. How'd you find out? Ah, uh, a friend at the network returning a favor. Anyway, they're only gonna sit on this for 24 hours. Good, thanks. I'm not gonna lie about this. It's too important. No one has suggested that you lied, Dwight. The policy's always been that without concrete evidence, we don't go around speculating. Well, I know all about policy. Also know what I saw. Yeah, what exactly did you see, Dwight? Because, you see, you haven't really said yet. When the time is right, I will. When will that be? Well, this was so out of the realm of anything I have ever experienced, it's gonna take me some time to fully absorb it. Once I do, and hopefully its meaning becomes clear to me, I'll share it with everybody. Well, until you have fully absorbed it, I don't think you should go anywhere near a reporter. I disagree. Look, say this takes me a couple years to sort out. What happens if I wait till then to talk about it? Nobody's gonna believe me. Credibility is gonna be a real problem. Dwight, it already is. <sighs> well, I have asked myself a hundred times, how come you didn't see it? You were right there with me. Yeah, I wondered that myself. We've been friends a long time. There's nobody I'd rather fly right seat with. Nobody in this program that I respect more. <laughs> Truth is, I don't think you were ready to see it. Oh, Dwight, come oh, on. Whatever the greater reason, this is one mission I was meant to fly alone. I'm gonna need all the ground support I can get. You get the notice we're scheduled for an ophthalmology exam tomorrow. Yep. See you there. I saw up there is sending me off in a whole new direction. Only if you let it. I don't have much choice in the matter. Neither do you. What are you talking about? I've been around these guys longer than you. Same old mindset. What you and I experienced challenges their belief system. So we gotta pay the price. Trust me, I've seen it happen before. Our careers as astronauts are over. Mr. Simon. Get lots. How can they force us out of the program and on what basis? 
they will find something wrong with us and they'll let us go. Why do you think they scheduled eye exams tomorrow? Because we saw something. Krauss said it was for insurance purposes since we were involved in a mission failure. That's a cover. They will make sure that the flight surgeon finds some condition to blame our experience on. So when we go out and talk about it, NASA will just point to the doctor's records, make some sympathetic noises, and nobody is going to take us seriously. But I've said all I'm going to to the people who need to know, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Tamara, whoa. We, we can't just ignore the enormous responsibility that's been given to us. I mean, something this profound, we, we've got to go out and share it. We can't let them keep us from telling the truth about this. I, I am not going to submit to my exam tomorrow. I think you ought to do the same thing. Who actually told you we were out? Like I said, I've been around longer than you. I, I know how these guys operate. Until it's official, I'm still part of the program. Are you going to refuse the SIM too? Bull needs to put his mind to rest. I will do that for him. But after that, been willing to come with me. Guess you don't date much, do you? Heads or tails? Tails? Okay, I'm gonna make him mad. I'm gonna, uh... All right. Come on, boy. Turn around. Excellent, excellent. Whoa, whoa. Okay, what, what I want you to do... You grab his front leg, this side, rear leg on the other. Just get a firm hold. Get him. Now, go. He's not going to do anything. Go. Good. Firm. Get a firm grip. Okay. I'm going to walk him out. Just ease him out. We're doing excellent. Ease him out. Okay, we're going. We're moving. Okay. Excellent. Slow. Good. Okay, whatever you do, don't let go. What happens if I drop him? You don't want to know. Going back home. Come on. Ooh. That's it. We're almost there. Gentle. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna let him down slowly, gently, very gently. Good. Okay, I want you to keep your hands on the back. Good. Keep your hands up, but move back. Let him know you're still there. Move back. Okay. Get back now. Okay. Perfect. You all right? Sure. <laughs> Couple days, you'll feel right at home. Like you've lived here his whole life. You know, it'd probably make him feel better out here if you had a girlfriend. You don't have a female in that truck, do you? As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> You're not finished yet. <laughs> Did you really have fun? Yeah, I really did. I wish everybody could experience what you did today. I mean, maybe then they'd realize what they're doing to the wildlife. You mean taking away the natural habitat? Yeah, but it hasn't already been destroyed by development. With all the pavement that's been laid, the rain can't soak through the aquifer. Wow, well, I didn't know that. Most people don't. It's part of my job to get the word out any way I can. So is that what today was? Just part of your job? No. I'm sorry, I just, I can't stop thinking about it. 
No, I know how you feel. Space is like that for me. It's always with me. Let's not talk about shop, though. Let's talk about this second date. Okay. We're gonna come at this from another angle, guys. Three, two, one. I moved to the pilot seat. My right hand stayed on the thruster, left hand on the translator. How's the real motion? Roger. Real is still unwinding. Dwight, main bus readout. Uh, looking good. Dwight, I'm reading a trip main bus fuse. Oh, yeah, that, that's dead. Sorry about that. How'd he miss that one? I don't know, but no change in tether tension, so that wasn't it. Anything else you can think of? Let's call it a day. That's all, folks. Talk to me. Nothing you did affected the tether. We've got more systems diagnostics to run, but as far as we can tell, whatever happened out there wasn't human error. So what you're saying is we have some sort of unexplained phenomenon. We don't know. my future? I see a, a beautiful beach, hard-packed sands, great for running, excellent for volleyball. That's all? What do you mean? I thought you were different, Zeke, that you're just as myopic as the rest of NASA. Excuse me? You know what I see? I see five little birds in a cage. They're all that's left in the world of hundreds of dusky seaside sparrows used to live right here. For NASA chose this as a launch site. But NASA turned most of that back to the wildlife service so they could make it into a refuge. After they sprayed for mosquitoes and the artificial flooding and draining. Look, Jennifer, I know that your job is important to you. This is not my job. This is who I am. I got my degree in biology so I could clean up this mess that technology's leaving in its wake. And that is exactly the technology that got us into this mess. What is it, either or? Either we clean up the environment or we find the space? No, we just have a lot of problems right here on Earth that we need to solve first. Like the rainforest? Yes. Yeah, what do you think made people even realize what was happening with the rainforest? Going up into space and being able to look down at the entire continent at once. It didn't stop the destruction, did it? It made people realize that it was a global problem, that we have to look for a global solution. Showing people problems doesn't solve them. But it's part of the process. It's like you taking me to the refuge yesterday. I think now that was a big mistake.
Look, Jennifer, you wanted me to open my eyes, right? To see your perspective? Well, I did. Now I'm asking you to try to see mine. Sorry. This is the audio tape from the mission. Tell them what you got. Well, that's just it. We're not exactly sure. Didn't hear this before now because there was always noise in the room. I was running it again myself this afternoon and... Well, none of us can get a handle on it. Sure hope one of you can. anyone? Tape wasn't fully degaussed from previous use. Brand new tape. Aberrant surface noise. Oh, this is the only time it turns up, just these five seconds. I've listened to every minute of the mission. Even when everything's quiet inside the orbiter, everyone asleep, I don't hear anything like this. just told me you'd make a noise about leaving the program. Yeah, I don't like being dictated to about what I can and cannot say. Yeah, I understand. I do. I really do. Look, Bo, like I told you, if I'm going to figure this thing out, I, I got to do it my way. No restrictions. Hey, Dwight. Catch. You couldn't see it, could you? Just like you didn't see the bus bolts in the sim. Just like you didn't see anything outside the orbiter window. Pharmacist said without more information, she can only assume these cortisone drops are for a retinal condition. But it's more than a condition, isn't it? It's retinal detachment. How the hell did you get cleared to fly with a retinal detachment? Oh, it wasn't completely gone until we achieved orbit. My doctor warned me that the vibration of another launch could do it. I knew the risk. I could still see well enough to fake a pre-flight physical. But why fake a sighting? The next astronaut needs a golden parachute. Couldn't ask for anything more lucrative than an extraterrestrial sighting. Hey, you'd still be involved, right? You still have a hell of a lot to contribute to future missions. Yeah, they, they probably told Scott Carpenter the same thing. You know what he's doing now? He's breeding wasps. I like being an astronaut. I don't want to do anything else. Never did. We can't be astronauts forever. No, you're wrong. Some of those guys in there will always be astronauts in people's minds. You say the name Pete Conrad and people say right back, astronaut, capital A, Gordo Cooper, astronaut. Ed Mitchell, and they say who? Ed Mitchell walked on the moon. He just didn't do it first, so it wasn't memorable. I just, uh, I want to be around long enough to be part of one really special mission. One that made history. Now that we have evidence on tape that something happened out there, I think I just did. We make history every time we go up there. Your sighting's only going to diminish that. Don't do that to us, Dwight. Don't do it to yourself. So for the glory of NASA, I'm just supposed to spend the rest of my life rotting away on the board of directors of some aerospace firm? That's my reward? Is that why you became an astronaut? for the rewards. No, that's not why I became an astronaut. We know a lot of rumors.
rumors have been bandied about why the tether broke. Well, now we know. Only mystery is why we didn't anticipate it. Sam? One of the gears in the deployment mechanism shed a minuscule metal shaving that ended up trapped in the spool of the tether. And as the tether was being pulled by our satellite, electricity was already jumping up and down the cable, um, including inside the reel. Oh, but what, what, what actually happened that caused the tether to snap? The metal shaving that was caught between strands of wound up tether created a short circuit. That short caused the power outage and severed the tether. It was nothing any of the crew could have done to prevent. But it's yeah. one experiment to fail. Is it the last one NASA will conduct? No, no. Spacecraft are becoming more hungry for power, and tether experiments just prove that we can provide the, uh, the energy needed for them. Yeah. What, what about the strange flash we heard about? Uh, we're still working on that. Colonel Ellis, Colonel Ellis, can you confirm reports that say two crew members claim to have seen some kind of unexplained light phenomenon? I can't speak for anyone else, but I didn't see a thing. Any more questions? Did any of you have some major setback for the program? Next time on The Cape. What are they calling her? Alana. 80 miles off Cuba, headed straight at us. Mother Nature takes a strike at KSC. Winds are clocking at 115. You're not safe here, sweets. None of us are. It's huge. If we stay here, we don't have a chance. Don't miss an all-new episode. We're gonna stick together. We're in for a long night. Of The Cape.